So it's great to have uh, Hyung Jin here today. Uh, he is a lecturer at the University of Birmingham. Um, Hyung Jin and I have known each other for how long now? Um, five years, I think? No, it must be longer. Six years or something like that. Um, he's not only a former colleague of mine at Imperial, but also a really good, um, really good friend. Um, so it's an honor to have him here today. Um, he has been at the University of Birmingham for a couple of years now. Um, before that, he did his um, postdoc at Imperial College uh, with um, Professor Demiris, and before that um, with uh, TK Kim, I think. Um, and he got his PhD um, from Seoul National University. Um, he is really interested in anything which is um, AI related. Um, so he's an expert in um, deep learning, in computer vision. He's done a lot of work on, well, today we're going to learn about um, hand pose understanding but he's done work on visual object tracking, um, many, many other related topics. And I think at the end of his um, slides, he, he's gonna give us an overview of um, his couple of uh, CVPR papers that he had um, this year um, and many, many more um, overall. So I don't wanna talk about it um, for too long. I'm just gonna hand over to you. Um, thanks again for getting up so early um, in the day. And yeah, looking forward to the talk. Okay, thank you for the introduction, Toby. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Hyungjin Chang at the University of Birmingham. Uh, thank you for inviting me to give a talk today. My talk title is 3D Hand Pose, hand pose and Shape Estimation from RGB Images. Let's get started. So first of all, let me start by introducing my research background. Uh, there are three main background elements that make up my research. It has aimed to solve uh, various computer vision problems based on machine learning techniques and further improve real human robot interaction. Naturally, in recent years, deep learning has been a main tool for my research and various computer vision and robotics research results have been being published at various top uh, academic venues. So my research has been focusing on the design, development, and application of artificial intelligence systems that learn from humans and cooperate in a deep and meaningful way. I call this approach human-centered visual learning, and I have been approaching it with two goals. The first is learning from human, which, which implies an AI system should be continuously improved while learning from human. Uh, imitating human intelligence process. And this, the second is learning about human, which means that the AI system needs to get to know humans by seeing them and create an effective and satisfying human robot and human computer interaction experience. To be more specific about the learning about human research, it's a comprehensive understanding of human through vision. In particular, I have been trying to look at it from the perspectives, perspective of, of a robot, which is a form that can physically interact with the, with the human. It is understanding a human's intention, emotional state, and concentration level through a human's posture, eye gaze, ha uh, hand movement, and interacting object. I have been actively publishing papers on each topic in the top uh, computer vision journals and conferences. Among them today, I will present my latest research focusing on uh, accurately estimating the 3D pose and shape of a human hand from RGB images. My research on the hands on the hand started when I joined Imperial as a research associate at, uh, at the Imperial Computer Vision Lab in 2013. At that time, I built, um, so I built a new hand pose data set with a PhD student, and then I gained interest in hand-related research, seeing its pot uh, great potential and importance. Then I joined the personal robotics lab, and I conducted research both on the human hand and the robot hand. Since then, the main research question on hand that I have focused on are largely three. The first is how to use the temporal information properly because the hand is constant, uh, consistently moving. Um, uh, actually, constantly moving. And the second, 
is how can be how can we accurately estimate the head model that is the kinematic model and the shape model and the third is how can how can we utilize the information of an interacting object together however it is still a very challenging problem to estimate 3d poses and shapes from 2d rgb images in particular, utilizing temporal information and object interactions still remains largely unexplored. So in this talk, I will present two of my recent works on each problem. So the first work is about using temporal information. Because the hand is constantly moving rather than stationary, I focused on how to utilize this dynamic motion for 3D hand pose, hand pose and shape estimation from an RGB image sequence. And we published this work last year at ECCB 2020. <clears throat> In this work, I studied a method that allows uh, generating the first sequential, uh, syn sequential synthetic RGB hand pose image dataset and a, a novel training strategy to preserve the pre-trained visual temporal features without collecting new real hand motion data. Since we believe our current pose estimations greatly rely on successive pose estimate, uh, poses estimated, we aim to exploit temporal features for 3D hand pose and shape estimation from sequential hand motion data set which has not been available so far because of the expensive, uh, expensive cost of annotating real hands. So we have decided uh, to generate our own synthetic data set. In order to generate uh, our own hand motion, image, uh, hand motion image data set, we first uh, generate pose flows, which it, we define as sets of hand poses that are put together in a gradual motion, uh, gradual motion during a time period. With annotations of BCAN 2.2 million data set, which was presented in CIBOPR 2017, 3D uh, TISNI graph of randomly selected BCAN data samples shows that uh, BCAN data samples densely located in a much wider space for both pose and viewpoint spaces than any other data set. Here is our approach on generating the, the pose flow. We firstly pick on initial and a final poses which are sampled randomly and independently. Then to uh, select the next pose station, we measure the difference between the initial and the final poses and update on cert, uh, a certain amount to have a certain uh, current pose updated for authenticity of all poses during the variation from the initial to the final process we pick a pose with within the hand a uh, big hand data set that is nearest to the current poses updated such pose selection is repeated during the length of a sequence to create a pose flow like this. When multiple pose flows are created and modeled with a predefined 3D hand model functions and reprojected to 2D uh, images, we are now able to generate synthetic but realistic hand motion data. And further, applying dynamic background images, we have created our synthetic hand motion data set, which is called a sick, uh, sick hand um, data set. The sick hand data set is the first sequential synthetic RGB hand pose image uh, data set, providing temporal features of various hand motions. We are now able to train a deep hand pose and shape estimator networks that exploit temporal image features. We then, we, we then uh, need to effectively con conserve the pre-trained uh, pre temporal image features of moving hands during synthetic to real domain transition. 
Since learning structure of hand movements in, two, in 3D space from 2D images can be separated into learning image features of real hands and learning kinematic structure of finger joints. So to this end, we propose the following training strategy to exploit the benefits of a stick hand dataset. During pre-training with sick hand dataset, our sick hand network learned temporal features of successive 3D hand pose variations that are mapped to image space for overcoming um, the synthetic real domain difference. We used real hand image datasets and their samples as one frame, one frame long sequence inputs to train pre-trained sequence network of which recurrent layers are detached. Uh, it allows to preserve pre-trained uh, temporal, temporal features while fine tuning including layers of appearance features. The criterion for uh, pre-training for synth sequential synthetic hand motion image data set is a combination of a reprojected a 2D joint loss, a 3D joint loss, a hand mask loss, a temporal loss, and a camera parameter regression loss. So the network, uh, the new network evaluated on various data sets and our method achieved the best or compatible uh, accuracy. The result of our proposed net method shows more stable predictions and smooth transitions among successive frames. And as you can see, it estimates the shape of the hand more stably than conventional methods and follows the movement smoothly. And our method predict, uh, predicts a stable hand pose estimation for static poses, while uh, our baseline results in unstable uh, pose predictions. When there's not much visual features given for the estimation estimator to predict poses, our method takes motion continuity and overcomes the pose estimation error. Due to our penalties on shape consistency, assuming the hand is in a sequence is owned by the same person, we preserve the shape consistency throughout a given sequence. So the next work is about hand object interaction. The hand is constantly moving, but at the same time, uh, it is always interacting with something. Understanding human hand and object interaction is fundamental for meaningful inter inter uh, interpretation of human action and behavior. Nevertheless, joint reconstruction of hand and object has received relatively less attention so far. In this research, we newly proposed a collaborative learning framework which allows um, sharing of mesh information across hand and object branches iteratively. Our model jointly reconstructs hand and object meshes from um, a monocular RGB image. Existing methods typ uh, typically train a two branch deep learning uh, network independently for hand object and apply physical constraint jointly in the final step. We started from the observation that hand and object are highly correlated. And the main idea behind this study was to uh, demonstrate uh, that mutual, occlu uh, mutual occlusion can be tackled in a learning-based strategy. So we designed the very first collaborative learning strategy on hand object scenarios. So uh, we design an attention-guided graph convolution which captures long-range dependencies. However, training with increasing collaborative, uh, collabor collaborative iterations can be highly unstable. 
which has been a huge hurdle of this kind of research. So in this research, we proposed um, an unsupervised association loss to stabilize the training and improve the process. Overall framework of the proposed method is shown here. The framework takes an input image X, um, which goes to uh, two separate RG, uh, ResNet 18 encoders to produce hand and ob uh, object features. The hand, uh, hand mesh estimator um, takes hand feature and output ha uh, hand mesh, which is then passed to uh, collaborative convolution and output a uh, hand feature. Uh, hand feature. And um, object mesh estimator takes both object feature and hand feature to uh, output object, object mesh. Then similarly, a uh, collaborative uh, framework, uh, collabor collaborative graph uh, co convolutional, I'm um, sorry, collaborative graph convolution takes object mesh and output a feature, uh, which is then combined with hand features and goes into hand mesh estimator. Like this. And the associative loss is used to supervise the feature uh, transfer process under collaborative uh, iteration. Quantitatively, we could uh, clearly see the improve improvement without enforcing physical uh, constraints and achieve the state of, state of the art results. Quantitative, uh, qualitatively, uh, we could see that our method, our model provides a finer reconstruction quality and is robust to various hand poses. And my future direction on the hand uh, research should explore the possibilities of enforcing temporal consistency over the estimated mesh and incorporate action um, incorporate action context into the new collaborative learning framework. In the near future, I may be able to digitize the hand and the tool movement of a skilled craftsman. Or make robots imitate the um, will make the robots imitate the rapid movements of a hand, uh, human hands. Furthermore, I expect that my work will attract more attention to learning based of strategies and can be extended to other research areas. Uh, so far, it was, uh, it was the introduction of uh, my uh, research uh, about hand. And uh, luckily, four papers uh, will be published in our lab at the Civil PR this year. And one of the one of which is on oral presentation, and the topics of these papers are unsupervised uh, representation learning, active learning, unsupervised domain adaptation, and object category level six pose estimation. Um, due to the lack of the time, uh, I will introduce each paper very briefly. So the uh, the first paper is about the uh, unsupervised. Uh, representation learning. Uh, most of the existing literature regarding hyper hyperbolic uh, embedding concentrate uh, upon supervised, uh, supervised learning. Whereas the use of unsupervised hyperbolic embedding is less well explored. So in this paper, we, we analyze uh, how unsupervised tasks can, be, uh, can benefit from learned representations in hyperbolic space. And we designed a novel hyperbolic uh, message passing autoencoder, whose overall autoencoding is performed in hyperbolic space. Um, and the proposed method uh, conducts autoencoding uh, the new the networks via fully utilizing hyperbolic geometric in a message passing. And the second one is about active learning. So the active learning for discriminative models has, uh, has largely been sp uh, studied with a focus on individual samples with less emphasis on how classes are distributed 
or which classes are hard to, uh, to deal with. So in this work, we show that this is harmful. We propose a method based on the base rule that can naturally incorporate a class imbalance into the active learning framework. And we show that our method can be applied to classification tasks on multiple different, multiple dif uh, uh, different data sets, including one that is a real world data set with a heavy data imbalance. And significantly, our, uh, we show that significantly, our method significantly out, uh, outperforms the state-of-the-art methods. And the other paper is of unsupervised domain adaptation. So the unsupervised domain adaptation method for learning, uh, for learning domain invariant in representation have achieved remar remarkable progress. However, most of the studies were based on, on direct adaptation from the source domain to the target domain and have uh, suffered from large domain discrepancy. So in this paper, we proposed um, a new un unsupervised domain adaptation method that effectively handles such large domain discrepancy. And we introduced a fixed ratio based mixed up, mix up uh, to augment multiple incre uh, intermediate domains between the source and the target domain. I'm sorry. Uh, and uh, the, the last one is about um, category level 60 object pose estimation. And in this paper, we focused on category level 60 pose, uh, 60 pose and size estimation from a monocular RGBD image. Um, the previous method suffers from insufficient category level post feature extraction, which leads to low accuracy and inference speed. So to tackle this problem, we propose a fast uh, shape based network, which we call FSNet, uh, with efficient um, category level feature extraction for 60 pose estimation. Uh, so the first row is the pose and size estim estimation results. Why uh, the white 3D bounding boxes denote the ground truth. The blue boxes are the poses recovered from two estimated rotation vector. Uh, the green boxes are the poses recovered from one estimated rotation vector. Uh, our our result match uh, ground truth well in both pose and size. And the second row is the reconstructed observed points under corresponding poses. Um, yeah. And the third row is the ground truth of the observed poses uh, points transferred from the observed depth images. As you can see, the, our proposed method uh, performs quite well and more videos and results are available uh, soon to be available in our uh, project page. Um, so my research will continue to deepen the degree of comprehensive understanding of human through visual data in, uh, in AI in the future. Uh, one more advertise. So uh, I, I have been actively working with on uh, working on the gaze research, and I started this research with uh, Tobias on the gaze estimation research. And um, the gaze related research is one of the main research topic in my lab, and there are still many problems yet to be solved. So every year I'm organizing an international eye gaze workshop sponsored by Facebook, Nvidia, and Google. In particular, we plan to organize, uh, uh, we are going to organize uh, this year workshop this year, June in Sibupia under the name uh, Gaze 2021, the gaze estimation and prediction in the wild. So if you are doing re uh, related research, um, uh, we, I, I, uh, please come to uh, drop by the workshop um, in June. So I'd like to inform you that, uh, I'd like to express my special thanks to my students who have actually carried out this study. 
that I showed you today. And in addition, I'm pleased to inform you that the research presented was possible with the help of various collaborators and sponsors. Thank you for listening. Do you have any question? Any questions here in the lab to start with? I'll start with one. Um, King Jin, what happens in your um, second work on hand pose estimation uh, with the objects if there's no object in C? Uh, if, I mean, this collaborative learning framework. Yeah. So uh, in this, okay, in this research, we assume, but also uh, actually we, we have tested without the object. And we have, uh, we have seen, we have checked that the hand pose estimation is still working uh, correctly. So regardless whether there's an object or not, it works fine. And uh, actually the re uh, there's a table, but I didn't prepare in this slide, but the table or uh, the result uh, show, the number actually shows that it's, it's compatible with the other uh, hand only uh, focusing uh, estimator network. I had a random question, Kim Jin. Um, yes. With your, um, with your data set um, that you created with all of the um, hand poses, you showed how you put them, uh, you know, put them with um, sort of normal images in the background where say, yeah, like that. Um, was there any thought put into the hands relation with what is in its general surroundings or is it uh, randomized at present? This is just a randomized, a randomized image. So we took the images from uh, VOC 2012 and we changed, um, uh, it's a crop of the image and we uh, randomly move the, uh, the cropping area so that uh, uh, simulating the hand or cameras keep moving scenario. Mm -hmm. So there's no, uh, no actual interaction or context of the uh, from with the hand, uh, hand motion. That makes sense. How did you find the best sequence length? Is there a recipe for it? Uh, the sequence length, um, actually we randomly, um, it's uh, actually, it's kind of, um, so uh, we randomly pick the initial and the final pose position. And we, uh, it's a hyperparameter, uh, we, it's a parameter that's, selecting how many intermediate feature, how many intermediate poses. And I don't remember exact number of the uh, uh, sequence, but um, we, ch we also changed the, the number of intermediate uh, hand poses. So um, that's, that's just parameter. But this, as you, as you can imagine, this uh, is um, the number of poses and number of uh, hand, hand sequences can be generated, infinite number of combination is possible. And um, yeah, so um, it, you, can, you can generate as many as data intermediate hand poses and the sequence, uh, the sequ sequence length using this method. Uh, for the 6D paper, uh, I have two questions. One is the uh, the results of the uh, the network uh, give you some information about the, the distance between the object and the camera. And the second one is uh, it's possible to use something like mono depth to to get this point cloud. Uh, can you repeat the first question? Like, it's it's hard to. It's hard to maybe just a. The first one is it's about the 6D paper. Um, the, first, the first one is about the, the outputs uh, encode some kind of like a distance between the object and the, and the camera. Uh, that's the first one. And the second one is about the, uh, the point cloud. Uh, it's possible to use something like a mono depth to get a, that as an input. Um, okay, so uh, 
I didn't show this slide, but uh, we used uh, socket lab. Uh, the the first question is this camera to the object distance. Are you asking the distance? So, um, so the the distance is not that much important in this case. Sorry, I, I whether I understand the first question correctly or not. Uh, yeah, it's like if, if in the but you use it in the in the the depth. Okay, the distance is in there, but it's not in the in the output as a. Uh, okay, and it's possible to use the depth from, for example, Mono AI or something like that. Have you, or this is like so, a, actually like a lidar. So we. Um, we used RGB and the depth image uh, together. So the RGB was only used to uh, to detect and locate the uh, you know the object target object, and then after that point cloud was uh, used. So if you know the object object location and if you can um, make a bounding box of the object, uh, then you can use the uh, depth mono depth as uh, for for the input. So here this part. To pro, uh, to general. so the uh, the point cloud is the input of this uh, whole network, the main network. I would say. I have a, qu I have a question. Um, sure. With your graph convolutional network, I think that was on one of your earlier works with the pose hand work. Yep. Can you go back to that. Yeah, I was wondering, so you got your collaborative graph convolution there. How many layers of message passing did you do? Uh, it's, I don't, I don't remember the, the number of layers, but it, it was not that deep. Not that big. I was wondering like, uh, like, like how do you know how many layers to use? Like that uh, parameter of, how many graph convolutional layers should you use to actually get your network to train properly? Do you have any insights on that? Uh, um, I don't remember the number of layers, but um, the layer is, is not that much affecting the performance as I remember. Um, so, uh, yeah, it, it doesn't have to be that deep. Um, and the, the reason why we, we chose the uh, graph convolution for this is because the input is the mesh, uh, mesh, and the output is going to be the features that we want to use. So, uh, it's, it's the number of layers is, it doesn't have to be that deep as long as if you can uh, contain the, well, represent the, the mesh into the uh, feature layer. So, uh, okay. Okay. That's, that's, that's good. Right. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. We've got time for one more question if we're trying to keep to time. Anyone online got any questions? Speaking? Yeah. How robust are your methods to different hand morphologies? So say you had a basketball with huge hands or a ballerina with really fine hands, how robust do your methods cope with these differences? Um, sorry, uh, your question is about the asking the morphology of the hand? Yeah, and how, and how robust are your methods to different morphologies? So let's say um, you have a kid's hand and a um, seven foot tall person hand. Yeah. Um, yeah. How, how can your method deal with that? Uh, I think it's a, it's a good question. Um, so regarding you, so uh, I can I can talk about both works. So for the first method about the um, I mean, I mean, this hand motion cases, this, um, in this case, we, uh, the shape uh, morphology and the shape should be depend on, we assume that 
uh, it's within the data set area. So um, if the hand is, is, has very different morphology or shape or size, then probably it, it, which was not covered in the data set, then it won't work. But you're jointly optimizing for the shape and the pose. Yes, so uh, so we also very uh, we we made a very uh, we also changed the shape as well when we generate this data set. So try to cover various you know hand shapes, but um, in if it's very much large, for example, like kid's hand or like as you said, like six foot or seven foot, uh, like like tall guy's hand, then it probably is not working well. In this case. So uh, we let the uh, the data set to uh, cover those kind of changes or uh, variations. And for for this case, as well, probably it will be similar, I think. So uh, we we mainly focus on the uh, the data sets and the given data sets hand, which is like ordinary persons hand size. So to be honest, we haven't tested on different morphology or different uh, you know, sized hand on this, this kind of situations. But I think it's, it's, it's a very interesting uh, question and interesting research uh, challenges. Thanks for going talk. Yeah, with, with all of them, okay. that will probably end questions unless someone's got something burning online. No. All right, uh, without any further ado, let's just uh, thank you, Jun, for a lovely talk. Thank you.